the prairie, Moby Dick. To scan the lines of his face or feel the bumps on the head of this leviathan. This is a thing which no physiognomist or phrenologist has yet undertaken. Such an enterprise would seem almost as hopeful as for Lavater to scrutinize the wrinkles on the rock of Gibraltar, or for Gaul to have mounted a ladder and manipulated the dome of the Pantheon. So in that famous work of his, Lavatar not only treats of the various faces of men, but also attentively studies the faces of the horses, birds, serpents, and fish, and dwells in detail upon the modifications of expression discernible therein. Nor have Gaul and his disciples, Spirizium, have failed to throw out some hints touching the phrenological characteristics of other beings than man. Therefore, Though I am but ill qualified for a pioneer in the application of these two semi sciences to the whale, I will do my endeavor. I try all things, I achieve what I can. Physiognomically regarded, the sperm whale is an anomalous creature. He has no proper nose, and since the nose is the central and most conspicuous of features of the features, and since it is perhaps most modifies and finally controls their combined expression, hence it would seem that its entire absence as an external appendage was very largely affect the countenance for the whale. For as in landscape gardening, a spire, cupola, monument, or tower of some sort is deemed almost 